Welcome to the Woodland Scenic Subterrain demonstration. Now this demonstration is designed to uh, show how easy the subterrain system is going to work against the traditional bench work of uh, building a train layout. Uh, traditionally it's a lot of power tools, a lot of calculating, or use the easy way, the subterrain way, where we can actually make the same type of layout, same great results. Uh, anybody can build. It's going to be lightweight and a lot of fun to build. So let's get started. The actual uh, layout is going to be built on foam. Uh, you're welcome to use plywood, whatever you're comfortable with. It's going to work on uh, either situation. I like to use the foam because it's going to remain lightweight. Now to get started, you actually want to build your train track or put your track plan and transfer that right onto that base you selected. Just build your track up, adjust it the way you want it, and then you can trace that using foam pencils provided in the system as well. Once your train uh, layout has been completely transferred down to your base, you can now select a riser that's going to work best for you. Definitely want to start off with at least a two inch riser. The risers are very flexible, uh, very easy to use, pretty much get any radius you're looking for with your train. But the whole idea is that to uh, elevate that off your base so you can then landscape lower lying areas off that train track as you would see in real life. Now my situation here, I'm going to be trying to get under some bridges. I definitely want a bridge on my layout. I need some elevation, so I'm going to be going up to the four inch riser, which is going to help me achieve that. Now once you have the riser selected, you go ahead and put that in position right over that uh, marks you laid for your track. And then you want to use the foam pins to actually attach that to your base. Now this is a way to do that in a temporary fashion where you can actually, we can remove those pins and readjust it uh, to get it exactly the way you want it. Which is almost impossible to do if you're building it out of wood. So again, another nice feature of the subterrain system. Okay, once we have that established, because I have a grade on my layout, my train's actually going to be moving up and down on my train uh, layout, uh, I'm going to be using our incline starter set. Now these starters come in a lot of different sizes to help achieve what you're looking for, but the whole purpose of it is to take, again, all those heavy calculations out of figuring out you know, what the grade is and how long of a piece you need. It's just impossible and it's going to make it very easy to do by using the inclines. Just figure out what your grade is and select the incline that's going to work best for you. Once you're satisfied uh, with that incline, go ahead and attach it again with foam pins directly to the top of those risers and then really quickly we have that all figured out and ready to move forward to the next step. Okay, now we're going to get into the profile boards uh, on the layout. This is actually going to be the perimeter of our layout. Okay, the perimeter, once it's all tied together, it's going to be part of that equation and make it a very rigid structure. The profile boards all have uh, uh, grooves cut into them, an interlocking system on them, which works very well for building corners. It is locked together. You can actually go in a horizontal fashion, which is real nice if you have a nice long span that you need to work on. And for example, my situation here, I need some height on it. So these will actually lock together as well in a vertical fashion to accommodate my mountainous area. Now, once I get that all established, we can go ahead and use our hot wire foam cutter to cut that profile down to a nice natural contour, pretty much like you would see out in nature. Now, that's going to give it a nice clean look without the mess of a traditional power tool on wood. This is one quick cut and you take that scrap off and either reuse it or discard it and then you have a nice clean edge. The wire cutter also works good for all my foam sheets which we offer in different sizes and thicknesses. And same thing, I can cut these exactly to the size I want to make all my flat areas or, or areas where I'm going to be putting uh, maybe some type of structure on my layout. On my layout here, I definitely foresee a uh, train depot being right here. So I take a piece of half inch um, foam sheet, attach it to a scrap piece of riser, and now I have a nice area to put a building on. I kind of foresee a uh, maybe a train depot here. So I just want that flat surface to accept that train depot when that time comes and it was very easy to do. Now also another scrap piece of riser laying around, definitely don't discard it, use it. This is gonna be perfect for making a little floating road here. That once it's all tied in with the uh, systems complete, it'll be very rigid and strong for my layout. But because of the nature of the product, it actually bends very naturally and selects that grade for me without a lot of calculations, makes it very easy to do. So that's all in place. Now at this point you want to go ahead and attach everything down permanently, make all your final adjustments, pick up your low temp glue gun and attach it all down. Just glue all around all the edges of it, make sure everything's tacked down before finally wrapping it up with the plaster cloth. Definitely want to use the low temp because of just that. It's a low temperature, it won't melt that foam as you're gluing it down. Okay, at this point we're going to go ahead and finish our contouring of our landscape. 
To do that, I'm going to be using the plaster cloth, again, part of the system. Take some crumbled up newspapers, pack those into position where you want your contour to lay. You can kind of leave your lower line areas, you want to build it up. And it's completely up to you, it's very foolproof, and regardless how you do it, it's going to make a very natural way, a uh, very natural look to it once it's complete. And then at that point, you can take your plaster cloth, cut the sheet to size out of the roll, dip it in water, and this piece here is going to work fine for me, and then lay that over your landscaping and smooth that out with your fingertips so all the holes on the cloth are actually all filled up. Let that dry, tuck it in where you feel like it needs to be tucked in. It's very easy to mold a very natural looking landscaping using the plaster cloth technique. Once it dries, it's rock hard. The entire layout's going to be interlocked together, so it's going to be long lasted and it's going to be as rigid as anything made out of wood, but yet extremely lightweight. And that's a great feature of the subterrain. At this point, you can also carve in some of your, uh, your terrain. I want some rocks on my layout. I know that for sure, like I've been doing here. So I can cut those right into the plaster cloth. Very easy to do. And very quickly, it starts taking shape and looks very natural. Now the final step, after you have your plaster cloth over your risers and inclines, you want to definitely attach your, uh, your road bed. Now this is uh, Woodland Scenics or the subterrain track bed, which actually you can glue down with a low melt as well or you can even glue that down with the foam tack, which is available in the system too. And of course, that's gonna be a great place to put our track onto. Now again, my final step was actually to put my depot on there, just to kind of show you placement on how that's gonna look and land on there. And as you can see very easily, we've created a lot of different uh, interesting uh, features on our layout that anybody can do. And with the time saved, it's gonna leave me a lot more time to do what I like to do, which is the actual landscaping of the entire layout.